Welcome back to our YouTube channel, guys. My name's Ardil, and today's video is all about a Porsche Boxster race that we've upgraded with a full sound system. And today's video is a behind the sound episode talking all about tuning, getting the car sounding amazing, going into a little bit more detail of what's actually involved in doing that step. So let's jump into it. But before we get on to today's video, make sure you guys at home have subscribed to our YouTube channel because we've got a massive competition live on our channel at the moment. We're giving away a brand new PlayStation 5 as well as an Order Supreme amplifier. All the details are in the description below. However, let's get on with today's video. So tuning a system is an essential part of getting a system sounding absolutely incredible. So we take this part very, very seriously. That's why we actually create a full video showcasing a little bit more detail about it. In terms of the install, once the install is complete, the car is completely back together, then the tuning stages begin. On the amplifier, it's got a processor built into it on this occasion. So it's the Order Supreme amplifier. So it's got the processing power built into that amplifier that allows us to tune the system. What we do initially is set up levels, making sure everything is safe, setting up a basic frequencies and a basic level over the car. However, then we take over to bit tune to then really give the sound a true character inside the car. In terms of how we do that, we set up microphones in the car. That's a very important thing that we're listening to things inside the car all electronically. Yes, by ear is very important, but electronic tuning makes a world of difference. So we've got lots of microphones in the car. We've got a central microphone, which is just here. That's basically using for time alignment as well as other areas to be able to listen to the car. And then we've got five microphones built in on the driver's side here. The reason why we're listening to the car is because you've got a very uneven area inside the car. One side has a steering wheel. The handbrake even is on towards one side of the vehicle. All of this affects sound waves. Obviously sound is just waves traveling throughout the air and we need to correct issues, obviously, where one might be firing in a certain direction, the other might not want to land in the same area. That's where microphones come in. We can actually analyze the sound and actually correct everything and make sure full time alignment is taking place. And that's why we're listening to the vehicle. So a good way to explain time alignment is actually similar in some ways to fading. So when you sit in your vehicle and you fade your vehicle back in terms of the sound, when you move it from that central focus all the way to the back, and when you do this next time you're in the car, really have a listen to this. When you do that, what actually happens is your volume at the front end of the vehicle decreases and the volume at the back increases, creating more of an illusion that the sound is at the back of the vehicle. However, that's not an amazing way of doing it. The amazing way of doing it is using products like this and tuning the system. With all this system, and when we run what's called fully active, we have control over each speaker independently. I'm talking left tweeter, right tweeter, mid bass in the door, whatever the speaker configuration is, we've got complete control over that. Time alignment is very different in a lot of attributes to fading a vehicle because you're not actually increasing or decreasing the actual overall volume outputting from each component. What you're actually doing is delaying and increasing the speed in which the song plays from each component, moving that sound around the vehicle. So if we want it to land on the outside of the car on top of my finger, that is actually completely possible. Or if we want it driver focus, central focus or rear focus, it delays and increase the speed in which actual sound waves are outputting from individual components. Once the BitTune software has actually analyzed the vehicle, listened with all those microphones inside the car electronically, listening to that interior of the vehicle, listening to those sound waves and test tunes that we're playing through the system, what it actually creates is a basic EQ curve of what the system should sound like electronically. However, that doesn't always sound absolutely amazing. And obviously we need to tweak that to our customer's music taste because this is an electronic tune. It doesn't have the ability to understand Obviously, customer's music choice, listening position, exactly where they sit in the vehicle, whether they want that driver or passenger focus or central focus, and we need to move that sound around the vehicle to tweak it a little bit more. Obviously, we've got the basic understanding here. It's given us a nice EQ curve, and this is all taking into account all of the stuff that needs correcting from the interior. Obviously, with the increase and decrease of actually the actual sound waves that are traveling all around the vehicle, what we actually need to do and what this is showing is basically a correction that from the vehicle is actually dipping here and also needs an increase in these frequencies at the higher range along the charts. So 
Once that's all in, we can actually go through and you can see actually on the levels of the products as well, which channels are running in terms of the system. And as if you haven't watched the previous episode, I'll run you through this quickly. In terms of the channels that we've got here, so we've got a three-way fully active front end. So we've got tweeters, mid-ranges, and then mid-base. In terms of the actual configurations, we were at channel, channels one and two are actually running the tweeters. Three and four are then running the mid-ranges across there. Then five and six is actually bridge on the left woofer seven and eight is then bridged on the right woofer giving more power to them but still because we're running fully active we've actually got a lot more control over the system so we can actually go on each component each tweeter each mid-range control the sound control the actual gain and output from each component in terms of volume but also what we can do is control clipping and make sure the sound isn't distorting at higher volumes as well and this is very dependent on amplification but processing plays a big part in that in terms of offering we offer a full lifetime warranty on our installs as product and also the installation. Reason is because we're doing this setup, we're protecting certain components, leveling everything off, but also making sure the car sounds absolutely incredible. It's now time to jump inside the vehicle. Now that basic correction is all done via the Bitune software, jump inside the vehicle, put on some of our customers' songs and actually tune it by ear, correct this a little bit more, fine tune everything and get it sounding awesome. So with the car obviously being a convertible, we've also got to take that into account with obviously the road noise that you're going to encounter when the roof is down, but also obviously two kind of different setups really, obviously with the roof on and roof down. So what we did with the Bitune software is actually analyze the system with the roof down as well as up, and then we kind of work out the best possible solution. However, if we did want to have two different setups, the processor does allow that. We can actually add a controller into the system that allows us to have two presets or even more presets depending on the actual processor that we're using. In terms of actually listening to the car by ear, what we do is we play our customers' music tastes and known songs that we know sound absolutely incredible on other systems and we try and replicate that into this particular vehicle in terms of what we've actually got here we've got the EQ and I've made a few little adjustments to bring that smoothness of sound down a lot of people think with obviously tuning a system electronically you actually get a very digital sound where it's very very sharp and correct and a lot of people like a bit of a smoother sound I mean let us know in the comments below if you've ever heard a analog system over a digital system let us know your thoughts comment below what do you prefer? In terms of what we're doing, we kind of choose a mixture of both. I mean, the, the technology that's there at the moment, like products like Bitune, to allow us to make cars sound absolutely incredible and correct things that the human ear just can't hear. We use these products to help us achieve great results. But we do always find that there is a little bit of a compromise. We do need to actually smooth out the sound a little bit to make it really, really easy to listen to. And at high volumes, low volumes, it should be a pleasurable experience just to sit in the car and listen to the music and enjoy all of those great details in sound that you just can't hear from factory systems. But now, listening to the system, it sounds absolutely insane and I'm really happy with the finished product. Thank you so much for watching today's video. Hopefully you've enjoyed it and learned a little bit more about the advantages of tuning a system and a little bit more about what's actually involved and why we do it. Thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to like, share and subscribe. We'll see you all very soon.